and welcome back to the most amazing channel on the internet. I'm your host Rebecca Felgate and today we're talking about the top 10 cursed items you should never look for. Now before we get into this video I just want to remind you guys that we have merch for sale. Our merch is the opposite of cursed, in fact it brings good luck to all that wear it. I really should be wearing it. If you want to buy some there is a link to that in the description box down below. Coming in at number 10 we have the Bassano vase. Nobody knows exactly where the Bassano vase is now, thankfully. It is at the center of some pretty dramatic Italian folklore. The story goes that the vase was made for an Italian wedding as a gift to the bride who was to be wed in a traditional ceremony in Napoli. On her wedding night she was murdered and she was found bleeding and clutching the vase. The legend has it that she promised to return and seek vengeance. After her death, the vase was passed down through the family, but anyone who came into direct contact with it mysteriously fell upon serious misfortune. Following that, the vase was wrapped up and packed away, but unfortunately, it was unearthed again hundreds of years later in the 1980s. Now then it started making headlines for continuing its spate of deadly bad luck. Newspaper reports indicate that the vase was later buried in an undisclosed location, hoping it will stay out of the way of human contact. Fingers crossed, just don't go looking for it. Coming in at number 9 we have the Diebuck box. The infamous wine cabinet is said to be haunted with the spirit of a holocaust victim and provided the inspiration for the 2012 movie The Possession. The box was famously sold on eBay in 2003 and has spent the past 15 years bouncing between owners who don't want it. Why don't they want it? Well each owner has fallen upon horrifying misfortune. One owner suffered a stroke after receiving it as a gift. Apparently the box has now been hidden away by Jewish rabbis. Coming in at number 8 we have Grisho Roman Cursed Tablets. Back in the Grisho Roman era, so basically 332 BCE to 395 AD, it was very popular to curse tablets. These were basically texts scratched on little sheets of lead. These were then thrown in wells, buried in graves or hidden in walls etc. They were intended to cause harm to specific people, so for example one unearthed in London on display in the British Museum says, I curse Tetra Maria and her life and mind and memory and liver and lungs mixed up together. May she be unable to speak what things are concealed nor be able. Sucks to be her. These little curses have cropped up all over the place. Over 200 have been found in the UK alone. While the curses are intended for specific people for specific wrongdoings, who actually wants to dig up an ancient curse? Not me. Coming in at number 7 we have Muramasa swords. Muramasa was said to be an excellent ancient Japanese swordsmith in the 15th hundreds. He wanted his swords to be the perfect weapons, so he asked the gods to instill them with special powers, which they did, only they also made them bloodthirsty and drove whoever wielded one crazy. Japanese folklore calls the swords cursed, and there are actually a few of them still surviving today. Those that have survived have found their way into exhibitions, but I would avoid them like the plague because whoever picks one up apparently goes crazy and wants to kill people. Good, great. Moving on to number 6 we have the Busby Stoop Chair. Do not go looking for the Busby Stoop Chair in North Yorkshire. As much as I love North Yorkshire, you don't want to be getting all cursed and stuff when you're really there to, you know, enjoy a pie and a pint and just like some good countryside. I think cursed really does ruin all of the fun. To cut a long story short, this chair was a guy named Thomas Busby's favourite pub chair. And I totally get that. Like, you go to your local, you want to sit in your favourite chair. Unfortunately, he got tied up in some bad business and murdered a man. When it came to his arrest, in the pub, obviously, he was sitting in his favourite chair. Now, he was very concerned about losing his pub spot, more so than being arrested. After he was hung, the story goes that anyone who sat in the chair befell great misfortune. The most recent chair related death came in 1978. At this point, the pub owner had had enough of the chair. He wanted it out of his way. He gave it to the Thirsk Museum, who have strung it up on the ceiling so no one can sit in it, although just like, don't even try it. Coming into number 5 we have the haunted eBay mirror. In 2013 a haunted mirror was sold on eBay for £100. Student Joseph Birch and his flatmate started experiencing weird goings on when their landlord hung up the mirror he found in a skip. Anyone watching from the USA this is basically like a little 
dumpster outside your house. The listing warned them that the item, despite being a beautiful Grand Victorian mirror, was possessed. The students said they woke up with scratches and things all over them, and they said they saw dark shadows flickering in the mirror. In the eBay listing, they said that the mirror makes them feel sick. Whilst the mirror was sold on eBay, the sale happened five years ago now, so little is known of its whereabouts today. Coming into number four, we have Maori masks. Maori are the indigenous people of New Zealand, and their masks are thought to contain the souls of warriors who died in battle. Whilst most people are okay touching a Maori mask, legend has it that if you're menstruating or pregnant, you should stay away because if you touch it, you can become cursed. You could even lose your baby or become infertile. Coming into number three, we have the Black Orlov Diamond. Unlike the more famous cursed Hope Diamond, the Orlov Diamond is still in circulation. The Hope Diamond lays in a museum where it can't hurt people, but the Black Diamond, formerly called the Eye of Brahma Diamond, is still out there, but it's now been split into several pieces of jewellery. The reason for the misfortune tied up in the jewel is because, as its original name hints, it came from the eye of the statue of the Hindu god Brahma. It was then stolen by a monk. Bad monk. In in 1932, diamond dealer J.W. Paris was exposed to the diamond for a while. He later jumped off a skyscraper in New York. Following that, two Russian princesses who owned the diamond consecutively jumped to their deaths in the mid 1900s. In a bid to break the curse, the diamond has been cut up into several pieces and is now a brooch and a necklace. One of the pieces was offered to actress Felicity Huffman, but she refused to wear it, which I think is totally fair. Coming into number two, we have undisturbed Egyptian mummies. The curse of the pharaohs seems to be pretty legit, as many archaeologists have found over their time. If you've learned anything from history, I'd say that you should know never to go look for an Egyptian mummy. One of the most famous examples of the curse of the pharaohs comes from those who opened King Tutankhamun's tomb in 1922. Lead Egyptologist Lord Carnarvon died six weeks after opening the tomb. He died. And then a further seven people on the dig also passed away in suspicious circumstances. Reportedly, another archaeologist on the dig received a paperweight containing a mummified hand. Now, this hand had the inscription that read, Cursed be he who moves my body, to him shall come fire, water, and pestilence. Now, apparently, the person who received the weight, Bruce Ingram, had his house burned down, followed by a flood after it was rebuilt. Now, there are still plenty of undisturbed tombs out there, but I just like wouldn't go looking for them. Finally, coming in at number one, we have William. Shakespeare's grave. Now, apparently, documentary makers in Stratford upon Avon plan to investigate William Shakespeare's grave so long as they don't physically disturb it. Now, the world famous playwright's grave is inscribed with a curse that promises to rain doom on those that touch it. Now, I, for one, would stay away. I wouldn't go looking for this grave. The documentary makers, however, are unperturbed. They're dicing with death as they want to 3D scan the tomb. But I don't know. Who knows how curses react to technology? I personally just would stay away. Nobody wants the kind of bad luck that the bard could bring. So guys, that was the top 10 cursed items that you shouldn't go looking for. Would you guys go looking for any kind of cursed items? Do you believe in that kind of thing? Do you want to get your hands on Annabelle the doll? I think she's in some kind of museum, so you know where she is, but I don't like it. Thank you guys for tuning in to this episode of Most Amazing Top 10. I'm your host, Rebecca Felgate. If you liked it, make sure you give it a good thumbs up, share it with a friend, and stay subscribed for more top 10 lists. Bye! <laughs>